Okay, so I'm Ted Bowman. I'm gonna sort of power through the slides. We don't really have very many slides and there's a bunch of code introduction. Um, so this is your first Drupal 8 or 9 module, or and 9, I guess. Um, so I work, I'm a principal software engineer at Acquia. I work at the Drupal Acceleration team. I'm Ted Bow on Twitter and Drupal.org. Um, I'm working mostly with Drupal 9 preparation, uh, worked on Layout Builder. I'm working on the update module right now, making sure it can handle uh, new things coming in Drupal 9, or new things coming on Drupal Drupal.org to make Drupal 9 seamless. So, um, how many of y'all are already making Drupal 8 modules? How many people are coders in some aspect? How many people do object-oriented code in some way? How many people uh, did Drupal 7 modules? Okay, cool. So I think it's pretty much the audience. So we're going to make a module. Um, the module's out on a project called Roll Notices on Drupal.org, and um, you'll see I'm going to jump between Git tags, so you can look at the repository and jump from like demo one to demo nine. So very simple module to like an actual functional module that adds a little bit in between, and that's what we're going to be running through. Um, Basically, this module is going to allow admins to set notices for each role. Um, problem about making demo modules in Drupal is like what, you know, everything's already been done. So um, it does show a bunch of stuff. So example would be you have editors on your site and you want to just put a note for them to say, hey, remember to check your spelling or the admins say, hey, stop deleting people's accounts. Um, <laughs> So we're gonna look at uh, role notices. It's gonna provide permissions. We're gonna have a settings form. It's gonna have a block. We're gonna use a service. It's gonna demonstrate some caching. Um, the last two asterisks I don't think I'll get to in the session, but if you look out on the code on the site, it'll show you how to make an extra field to show notices on profiles. And then it'll also have an example of how to let other modules alter the notices that your module makes. So like a hook, an alter hook. Um, so let's do a demo of the finished module. So I'm going to go to my terminal and I'm going to run my demo script and I'm going to change to the nine, like the, so the final Drupal compat, the final version that's compatible with both Drupal eight and Drupal nine. And I'm going to install the module. Oh, did I already? Ooh, I did not install it. Okay. So I'm going to install it again. Ooh, install. Roll notices. Um, so the first thing you'll, where you actually set the notices is if you go to people, we're going to put a little tab up on here. Um, you have a message for each of you. Each role will have a new text box that will show up. Um, we're going to be able to go and block layout, and we can add a block, just add it to the sidebar. We'll have a roll notices block, we'll post it. And then when we go back to the site, we'll see we're both an admin and an editor, so we'll see both roles. Um, and then um, that's pretty much it for the, de for the demo, so that behind the scenes we'll see the stages of like, hey, this doesn't, you know, when I update the notices, it doesn't show up because the caching is wrong. So let's sort of, anybody have a question about like what the module does? Can you show us the path to the module again? I think I you went by. Uh, it's a project. If you search for um, roll notices on, okay. roll notices Drupal, I'm pretty sure it'll show up. Okay. Um, Okay, so I'm going to switch to the very first thing, and this is going to basically be like a hello world. So um, in Drupal 8, we have info.yaml files, and so under your uh, folder, you'll have an info.yaml, and this is your was it dot .ini in, in Drupal 7. Um, you just need to tell it name, type, description, um, package is optional, um, 
Right now, I'm just saying it's just compatible with uh, Drupal 8, but we'll show how later we can add another key to say, hey, it's compatible with Drupal 8 or 9. Um, and I'm just putting the dependency of block to say, you know, if you can't display that block, then there's no reason to install the module, so I'm going to depend on the block module. Um, so the first thing we need to do is there is a file called a routing file. So it's, it's routing.yaml, uh, sorry, .yml. And this is, if you're familiar with Drupal 7, this is like hook menu. So when hook menu did a whole bunch of things in Drupal 7, and that in Drupal 8 has been split up into sort of, multi, most of it's been split up into multiple YAML files. So this is an example of where we're saying, we want to take over a particular path, and we want to tell you what to do at that path. So we have a machine name here that we usually will want to start with the um, uh, machine name of our module so that other people don't have the same name for routes. Um, so we have role notices dot hello. And then we have a path that we want to take over. Um, and so we're, we want to, I chose this path. Actually, this is on the reports one. So this actually is not the ultimate path we'll use. This is just sort of a hello, get, get a status out there. Um, and then under defaults, we want to tell it that we have a controller. And the controller in this case is just a simple PHP method. We could actually point to a global method in a .module file if we wanted to, but in Drupal 8, usually you have a controller class where you point to a particular method. And really the only requirement is that it be a public method and it return a render array. So a render array in Drupal 8 is is pretty much similar to a render array in Drupal 7. Um, so we'll look at what it um, returns in a second. And then we have a title, and then we have requirements. Um, in our requirements section, we have a permission. So we're gonna define that permission in the module, but we don't have to define a permission. We could just say, let's look at what the system module has for permissions and let's just put that string in there. So in this case, uh, permission just needs to be a unique string that we're gonna check to see if that user has. Um, so let's look at this function here. So again, I put the whole namespace and the namespace includes my module. Um, and if we look at our directory here, we have a source directory um, and that basically, if you think of the namespace kind of si skips the SRC source directory, so we have role notices controller is our namespace that we're gonna see in the file. So namespace role notices controller, so SRC is kind of implied here, it's our source. And then we are going to look at, um, so we have a page that's a public function, uh, a public function, and it's gonna just return uh, the pound markup, which just markup text is very the simplest uh, render array you can imagine. And in our markup, the only thing we're doing here uh, that would be different from Drupal 7 is we have a this to say, uh, call the translate function. We're using a trait up here. So this string translation trait is just gonna provide us some help, a helper method, a couple helper methods. The only one we're using right now is T for translate. And that just means that when we get something, when we want to put text on the screen, we want to make sure if the site's in Spanish, that if they have a translation file that has this key hello world in, um, that they will, not the key, the value, that they'll be able to translate it into Spanish to say hello world. And we just return this. So let's look at see what that looks like on the page. So I'm going to go to, actually, I'm just going to go directly to the path because I haven't showed you how to make a menu yet. So I'm just going to grab that path. And we just have hello world. So obviously you didn't see just a white screen with just hello world. Basically what we're saying here is when we return our render array, we're saying, hey Drupal, wherever you put main content, put our content here. Um, so we don't take over the whole page. We just take over whatever is considered main content in this, in this case. Any questions about that? All right. Okay, so let's look and see. We actually also have a menu item. So if we look under Home Administration Reports, 
there's going to be a roll notices hello world uh, page uh, menu item with the description that'll get us back to the same page and how that is done is so this is another example of something that was in hook menu that's been split up into uh, multiple yaml files so we had our routing dot yaml file now we have a links dot menu dot yaml file and here uh, similar format it's just another yaml and we're telling it these are this we have a machine name of roll notices dot hello it doesn't have to be the exact same as the route but um you can have the same if they're two different types of uh things like a route and a menu you can use the same key they won't conflict um so we're just showing title description and then here the route name we just have to pick the route that we just made in the yaml file and in parent I basically want this to be under the admin uh, reports uh, menu item. And if I wanted to figure out where that is, I would go to the system mod, system .menu .links, wait, system .links .menu .yaml file, and I would look, okay, actually, let's just uh, look here. So under the system, this is system links .menu. I could search for that particular one here, and I would find the menu item. If I didn't know that that menu item existed, I could look in the system module at their routing file. And I, let's say I did know that this was, that there was a um, menu item at admin reports. I could just search the YAML file and say, like, okay, the system module takes over this path. And then it provides a route. So I'm gonna grab that route and see, okay, what menu item uses that route? So I'm gonna take that machine name, go back to the system module menu file, gonna search for that route name, and there it is. So they followed the pattern, I guess I followed their pattern of using the same menu, the same route name, machine name as the same menu machine name. It's kind of an easy way to tell. Any questions on that? So any time you're at a path in Drupal and you want to figure out like what's controlling this, for a lot of paths, you can just take the path and you can search if you have a, like in PHP Storm, it lets me search just routing files and I can search just routing files for that. So it works well for administration pages. It's not gonna work for like, it's not gonna have node dash one, two, three in there. Those are made slightly differently. Um, but for ones that don't have a variable in the in the route in the path that makes it that'll it'll find it. Any questions? All oh, makes perfect sense. Am I going way too slow? Way too fast? You're fine. Okay. All right. So so we made the menu item. Um, let's go back to roll notices, and then we also make permissions. So you'll see a lot of this. The simple stuff is just making YAML files, and in this case. Um, I have a role notices dot permissions dot yaml and I have a uh, a key administer role notices and then a title so something I want to see on there um, if you look at the code I have a description of, of more of how this does but basically we're checking for this string in um, the routing file if I search for the routing file I'll find this exact string um, so of course in Drupal you don't you have to then you know assign the roles in um, in the admin side and I just think that's actually something I forgot to do in prep so I'm going to just make a user real quick I'm going to add uh, ted at yo dot com ted ted okay so I'm going to Make, I'm going to make them an authenticated user just so later on we can see that this account will get the uh, the authenticated user message, but not the administrator one. Um, okay, so let's go to okay. So links, menu, permissions. Like okay, I copied everything. So we in this so in this step we have four YAML files and one controller class, which just is just a very simple um, class. No, nothing special about this class. I don't extend anything. It just returns a render array. The only thing 
I did really is I use the string translation trait to make sure it's a translated text. All right, so let's go on to step two. So step two, we're gonna make a very simple form. So we want this form to show up next to admin people. So if we look at people here, so my script to change phases also clears cache. So I have a new menu item. I have a new route that I take over. Anytime I do stuff like that, I'm gonna to wanna to either clear cache through the browser or clear cache through Drush. Um, so we have a new tab here called role notices. And right now we're just gonna have one, um, one text area, no matter, and we're not gonna do it per role. So I'm just gonna say hi there. I'm gonna save it. It's gonna tell me, hey, your notices have saved. And you'll notice that we don't lose our value here. So let's see how that works. So we're gonna go back to the routing file. And now I've added, so this is our pre-existing one, role notices hello. And above it, we have role notices dot settings form. Okay, so we have a new route we have here. So we're taking over a new path, um, admin people uh, role notices. In this case, instead of underscore controller, we're gonna do underscore form. And so this, I'm saying, basically what I'm saying here is the, the class that I'm pointing to implements something called form interface. And the form interface is gonna have stuff like uh, build form, submit form, I think validate uh, form. So it's gonna have a bunch of stuff that Drupal will, Drupal's form system will know to call at the right time. So in the previous case where I had an underscore controller and it didn't have to be any particular special class, it could be a global function for all I care, um, but it, it had to just return a render array. In this case, if I do something else like underscore form, I do have to implement a particular interface. So I'm using the same permission here and let's see what this one does. So I have a class, role notices settings form, that extends form base. So form base is something that Drupal core provides and it, it's gonna just provide some functionality that's likely not gonna change between forms. I think example would be, it implements validate form for me because maybe I don't need validation so I shouldn't have to uh, implement it myself. The, the important thing here is that it implements form interface and form interface is gonna have just a few things like I have to tell it a form ID. I have to have something that builds the form. I have to have something that submits the form. So these are things that I have to implement the interface. If I, if I didn't implement the interface and I just said underscore form and I just pointed to my controller, Drupal would say, hey, that's not, a, you know, I don't know what to do with that. So let's go back to the routing file. Any questions on that? Um, a lot of, you can look at settings uh, forms, any form class and sort of check out what it does. Um, so let's go back to the routing one. Um, the other thing that we've done is, let's look at, the other thing we've done is we have links.task.yaml now. So this is another YAML file, similar to the menu uh, links one, except this one is gonna create local tasks, which usually in Drupal means it's gonna be tabs. So similar to my menu item, I have a machine name, title. In this case, I have a, um, the route name that is my new form. Then I have a base route. So for local tasks, if you're not the base tab, then you need to say, okay, what, you know, what's the base tab that I want to attach myself to? And then wait is just the, um, I want it all the way over to the right. So I, I chose 15. Any questions on that? So let's look at our form again. So our form is going to just have an, a form ID. The big one here is build form. So like render arrays haven't changed since Drupal 7 that much. Form arrays haven't changed that much. Um, I'm going to just put out one element called notice. It's a text area. Again, I'm translating everything like I did with the controller. Um, and then I just want a default value. So the default value in this case is I'm going to call Drupal service. So basically what I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, Drupal, I know you have something that takes care of 
uh, saving stuff in the site state. So this is a little different from site config. Basically, this will be different from each development environment. I can't like, this won't export to configuration. So my notices are things that I want to be on the live site. I want to be able to say, okay, I'm going to log into the live site and say, hey, you know, editors, get work on publishing that stuff we want for the spring sale or something. Um, so that's not something I want to push out via con uh, configuration. So in this case, I'm going to use the state service. And the state service is simply going to let me grab things with a key, and it's going to return a value to me. And in this case, I'm saying, hey, if you don't have anything with that key, just return me back an empty string. So the first time I hit the form, it would have nothing in that key, so it would just say, okay, here's an empty string. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm going to make a button, a submit button, and... I'm just going to give it uh, the save notices for the value, which will be the button value. So that is pretty much what we saw here is our notice form, uh, text area, and then a button. We have our little description for the text area. Um, and then on the submit, what I'm going to do in... In Drupal 7, this would have been, I forget, you would do like a submit callback. You would say, okay, when I submit this form, call this function. In this one, the form interface takes care of that for you, um, where this is part of the interface, so the Drupal form system is going to know to call this method, so I don't have to put this one anywhere else. Um, and in this case, it's going to get an array, which is a rendering of, a render array of your form, but the other thing it gets is a form state interface. So in Drupal 7, this was also just an array. Um, but this is a special, uh, it's an object of the form state that implements form state interface that I'm going to know how to get values from and set values to. So in this case, if I look at my, rin, my form array, it has a top key of notice. So I can get a value of notice from the form state. So it just automatically, whatever the, top level elements of the form. In, mo in most basic forms, you just use top level elements and you just grab, say, hey, get value. It's what was ever submitted. Um, so in this case, it's a string. And I want to just save it to the state. So up here, I said, get me this key. And now I'm saying I want to set this key to be whatever was um, inputted in the text area of the form. Does that make sense? So basically, git, save, git, save, every time I set the form. Um, and here, I'm just going to have a message. Uh, the notices have been saved. So what I want to do here is basically, this is a deprecated function. Um, so later, when I have the Drupal 9 version, you would see it actually say, um, we're going to replace that with something else, and then it'll be, it'll be um, Drupal 9 compatible. Everything else I've shown you is, would work in Drupal 8 or Drupal 9, and I just left this as an example as how something you might need to replace. Questions? All right, let's jump to the next one real quick. Uh, so we're going to go to settings form for multiple. So if we look here, basically what I did here is instead of Instead of having one text area, I'm going to get all the user roles from the site and I'm going to loop over the roles and I'm going to make one text area for each role ID. So in this case, I have a nested text area under the notices key. Um, the main thing you'll see here is that when I get value, I still get notices, but in this case, notices becomes an array um, because each element as long as in my form I set the top level item of my form notices, I set tree equals true. It basically means that this key here will come back as an array. So I have six text areas. When I submit it, the form value notices will, will be a, will be a array with six values. And for my state, I don't really care. I just am going to save it um, as as one value. So usually you wouldn't do this in a, um, uh, you know, usually you would just stick to, to one value, not string to array, but just for demonstration pur purposes. Um, in this case, I've actually replaced the messenger 
so there's a special function called messenger on the Drupal um, class. I get that and then I add message. So at this point, voila, it becomes Drupal 9 compatible. Um, any questions on this on the text areas? Let's reload it and see what it looks like. So I reload this page. Now I have two, one for each role. Um, and I save it here. So I'm going to jump and show the block real quick before we get to questions. Oh wait, three, five. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to, any questions on that? All right. So let's look at the block. Sorry, quick question. So you, yeah. you said it's an array of six items because there are six roles. Is that? Yeah, it would be if I had six roles. Oh, if you did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't, but in this case, it'll be two. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it'll make um, it will be an array of however many elements are under the. If I look back at the um, the form. I'll just, I'm just keep adding keys there and I'm doing it in a loop. So I don't know exactly how many there are going to be, but oftentimes maybe you would have like messages, maybe one's critical, one's not critical. Maybe it's hard coded. So you know, which ones are coming back. Um, okay. Did I switch? Okay. So I'm going to go to settings form a simple block. So we're going to display those messages. Uh, so now we have a folder called plugin and basically a lot of type of plugins in Drupal nine, you'll have field formatters, you'll have field types, you'll have, um, rest plugins, but in our case, block plugins are among the simplest. So in this case, I don't have to register anywhere else. Like I do with YAML files to routes. I just have to say. I have to put it in the right folder that it expects um, and usually just look at other modules to see what they did. And then you have to have up at the top, you have to have an annotation. So this is metadata is really metadata and comments. It's not really code. Um, but if you're familiar with Drupal seven, there was something called hook block info where you like list all your blocks and then those blocks will have act different functions to um, return their values. So here each plugin, in this case, a block is going to say, Hey, I'm a block plugin, this app block. And then there's certain stuff that it needs to know. Uh, the bare, bare minimum is it needs to have an, a unique ID. I'm using role notices, and then it needs to have an admin label. I'm doing this at translation so that when it displays in the block layout page, uh, role notices would, could be translated if it was in Spanish or another language. Um, I'm extending block base here. I could do it from scratch as long as I implement the block interface, um, class, but usually you'll uh, want to, uh, do block base like we're doing, like I did form base earlier. Um, in this case I have block access. So basically who should be able to see this block, not, not configure it. Um, and I'm using this thing called access allowed. So in Drupal seven, often you just return a true or a false. Um, in this case, this needs a access result object. And then on the access result object, there's different methods like allowed if allowed, if have permission, um, I think those are the main ones, uh, forbidden if, or whatever, but in our case, we're doing allowed if. In this case, this would be allowed if ex expects a Boolean. So often on access functions, they send you the user that you're checking for access. So I have a user here and the uh, account interface object has a is authenticated uh, method. So it basically returns true or false. So I'm just saying anybody who's authenticated can, can see this block. I could obviously make a messages for anonymous users, but I didn't do that. Um, if I want everybody to see the block, then I wouldn't even need to worry about this. Um, and then I have a build, which is similar to build form in that it ultimately just sends back a render array. So I could have just had a step where I just do hello world block. You know, I just could, I could, I could have sent back the exact same thing I sent back on a hello world controller. Um, but what I want to do is I'm going to get the roles of the current user. Actually, I get the state that we set in the form and then I get the user roles and here I'm just doing an intersection. So the user roles are going to have IDs that are role IDs. My notices, I also use the IDs for the roles. 
So I intersect those two, which basically gives me all of the notices for the roles the current user has. And then I'm just using uh, a theme function. Um, so pound theme tells me, okay, this will ultimately pass off to something item, I think it's item dash list dot twig dot h html dot twig twig dot html. Um, and that will decide how a list is rendered. Um, and then it expects, the minimum it expects is, is something called items. And I'm putting the user notices, which are just text. So if I did that, let me see if there's anything else in the, I think that is the whole block. Um, so if I go to block layout and I place a block, let's place it in the header. If I look for role, you'll see this is the name of my block and that comes from the annotation. I'll place that, uh, save it, go back to my site. And I have the user roles over here, which is probably not a great place for them. Um, but I can place them. Your module doesn't determine where blocks go usually. It just declares blocks and then your site builder places them. Any, so uh, we have about 10, 10 minutes left. So we're gonna do questions. I can also go on to next steps if people are interested, but questions. Are there any generators for that or is it all encoded? Yeah, so there is something called Drupal console um, that will generate code. There's also a Drush module, but a lot of people use Drupal console. So um, Drupal console, once you get it installed, there's a bunch of help. There's like a help when you just get the status. Once you have Drupal console and just Drupal, it'll show you all the possible things it can generate and possible things it can do. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a good way to start. And it'll, it can actually create routes and stuff for you and stuff like that. And it'll create a dummy controller for you. It asks you the name and stuff like that. So that's definitely a good way to um, I would definitely recommend, I mean, you can do it a lot from just copying from other modules, but Drupal console is a good way to get up to speed after, um, uh, for me, I think I started without Drupal console and I feel like it helped a little bit at first, but, um, I think after you start making more, it's, it definitely helps with, with that, speeding things up. Any other questions? All right, so I'm gonna go on to the next. Uh, so we're at four, I'm gonna to jump to five, which is a simple notices manager services. So actually I wanna point out the, prop, the thing that this next step is gonna solve before I do that. Um, right now, when we display the notices, we call the state and get this particular key. Um, and then in the form, we call the state and get the same key, so this is the same same code and then when we set it we do the opposite we get the state get the um, and then we set this key so we're using the state service to get um, to get the notices when we want to build the form and we want to display the block and then when we save the block we also want the state to save it um, so this really couples our our notices to the idea of how they're stored which we don't necessarily want them to be so closely coupled maybe you would want to replace that in the future by actually having these be configuration. Maybe if these are more permanent messages, you actually do want them in configuration and want them to push them out in a different way. Um, so we're going to see how we can sort of separate that out. So I'm going to go to, this is also shows you how to make a service. So a service is just a class that you registered basically that usually has some logic that you want to separate out. Um, so we have a class called notices manager and this notice manager class again does not have to implement anything like services space or whatever it's just a simple class that you're gonna have methods on they need to be public message up uh, methods so we're gonna have a get notices and I'm not gonna go over this logic because it's pretty much the same as we had in the form in the block I'm just encapsulating it somewhere else and then um, all right, get user notices, which are going to get the notices for this particular user. I'm going to get all notices. So this would be for the form side, where if I want all the notices, regardless of the current user. And then I want to set all notices. So basically, I want everything else in my module to not know that this is stored in state. I just want, whenever you want to save notices, use this class or use this service. Whenever you want to get notices, use this service. So how this actually becomes usable is 
we look over in our directory, we have something called services YAML now. So it's role notices.services.yaml. We have a top key of services, which we have to have. And then for each of our services, we'd have our own key. So I'm going to have role notices.manager. And for most services, all you're going to do is just say, hey, here's the class that um, controls that service. Um, so notice is manager here. So how we use that one is let's look at the form. Uh, so I think that's the... So instead of calling the state service, I'm going to call the um, R manager service. So I say Drupal service, and it used to be state. Now it's Drupal service, roll notices, notices manager, and I say get all notices. So this class doesn't have to care how I retrieve the notices. It just no, it trusts that the service will do it correctly. Um, and then at the bottom in the save, it uses the Drupal service, role notices, notice manager, and says set all notices. So basically, it also doesn't care how they're saved. Any questions on that? And the form, or sorry, the block will use the same thing. The block also uses the service, except in this case, calling the notice manager, and then I want to say get user notices. So I'm not getting all notices, I'm getting just the ones for the user. Um, so the benefit of this, right now I only have two spots where I'm displaying notices, but later on the module I would add them to the user profile page, um, and you could have maybe a list on the status report where you list all the notices regardless of user. And in that case, you know, then you're using the service. The more places that you use the same logic for saving and getting this stuff, the more beneficial your service is to not duplicate any logic. Any questions on that? All right, so I'm going to go on to the next one real quick. Um, so that was services. So now we're going to add cache support. So actually, let me demonstrate the problem here. Um, so, oh, I must have placed the block twice. Okay, so my notices are here, and you can see the first notice is just gobbledygook here. So I'm going to replace that with an actual message. I'm going to open that up, go to roll notices, and I'm going to say important message. Um, so I save that, so now I reload this page, and this notice does not change. So it doesn't change because I haven't told Drupal when to invalidate this block cache. So by default, it's just going to say, okay, um, I'm going to cache this until, until you tell me to uncache it, so it doesn't generate it every time. So I'm going to fix that, but I'm actually going to check out this tag add cache support because I don't want to use my script because my script will um, clear cache so it kind of defeats the purpose so I'm going to check out this tag um, if I do it right now it still won't work because I've because when it rendered it in the render array is when you tell it the cache information so it still has a render array with no cache information um, so I'm going to clear cache and I will look at the code real quick so the code on the block has changed in that uh, we have this pound cache. So anything, any render array you can add this to. Then I have two sub items. One's context. So context would be the context of the user, maybe the context of the path. In this case, we're going to say the context of the user roles because we want this to invalidate any time somebody changes their roles. So if they get a new role or they get a role taken away, we don't want to see the, the messages for the roles they used to have. And then the other thing is now I've added to my notices manager um, a function called get render tags. Because basically I want to invalidate if the user gets new roles, but I also want to invalidate if the roles, if sorry, if the notices themselves change. So basically what I do is I just say um, I grab uh, the role. I, I create, it's just an array of strings. It's role notices colon the role ID here. And 
so it's basically an array of strings so that at that's the render tags on the render side but then i of course need to invalidate them somewhere so in my um, set all notices i'm just going to call the same thing to get the render tags and i'm going to invalidate those tags so every time i save notice i, I say invalidate all these old tags so anytime i have the blocks displayed on a profile uh, sorry, the message is displayed on a blo uh, block or later on on the user profile. Drupal's going to know to say, okay, these cache tags aren't invalid are valid anymore. Let me re-render those. Um, and I think that is all we have time for. Any questions? Is this available? Uh, do you have like a repository or something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's a role notices project out on Drupal.org. All, all the stuff that I've been showing jumping through things are git tags so yeah i think on the project page it shows you it's like the fourth generation of the drupal 8 one so it's 8x dot 8 demo one dot demo two dot demo three or whatever um and then it'll show you the so it has a final project and then there's also a step that um will show you that the so everything this module that i showed you will work with drupal 8 or drupal 9 um, because I didn't use that Drupal set messenger, I placed it with the, the messenger service, which is uh, compatible with Drupal 9. Um, the only other thing I had to change, since people aren't running out, uh, I'm going to show. The only other thing to make it Drupal 9 compatible is in the info.yaml file, I have a new key called core version requirement, and this is a composer simver string and I'm just saying with all of eight or all of nine often what you really need to do is I think in, in actuality I, this is not compatible with eight five but eight five is not supported for a while before since now so um, this will this will this will allow it to be enabled with eight or nine um, you could let's say I knew I had something that was deprecated in eight eight I could change it to eight eight or above or nine um, does that include 8.8 notation? Yeah, that includes 8.8 and above or 9. So this is the same notation. This is basically the same notation as you would have in a composer file for Drupal core. Like if you say, I need 8.8 core or, or 9 core, this is the same exact. We actually parse it to composer to tell us whether it's right or not. Yeah. Is there any way to specify 8.8 or higher? Yeah, if I did this, uh, yeah, technically you could, but usually with Simver, they want you to, they want you to, um, I can do this. That would actually work, but usually it's not recommended in Composer because that would be compatible with Drupal 10, and I don't know that it's compatible with Drupal 10. <laughs> so just to like future proof it so somebody doesn't, you know, in five years try to install on Drupal 10. But yeah, that would work also. I think, I, don't, I might have to do that. Uh, the zero, like for the full number. All right, thank you. Yeah.